I understand that we have uh, already connection with uh, Professor Shimu Kawahara, uh, and uh, he is ready to, in fact, to teach us because he is one of the pioneers. Uh, he is, in fact, uh, one of the leaders in the in the application of this uh, new method of treatment. Uh, hello, Hiroto. How are you? Hi, hi. Uh, my name is Hiroto Shimu Kawahara from Okayama Medical Center from Japan. Uh, thank you for introducing me. So, and uh, we are listening to you with huge interest. Ladies and gentlemen, so uh, good evening, everyone. So, uh, my topic, my uh, title of my presentation is the history and the future perspectives of the BPA for patients uh, with the CETA. So, this is my COI. And uh, this slide shows a treatment algorithm for patients with a CTAP so proposed in the well symposium over pulmonary hypertension in 2018. So PEA remains a treatment of choice in patients uh, operable CTAP. However, not uh, PEA is not an option for every patient. So for inoperable patients with a CTAP, so medical therapy or BPA may be considered. So in 2000, uh, sorry, uh, this slide shows a fast uh, case uh, treated with the BPA uh, reported in 1988. So 20, uh, 20 year, uh, sorry, 30 year old male are uh, treated with the BPA and uh, three BPA procedures and the four regions were diagnosed. So mean pop decreased from 40 from 46 to 35 millimeter mercury. However, patient developed the perfusion pulmonary edema in two procedures. So thereafter, so balloon pulmonary angioplasty uh, couldn't be accepted uh, due to the high incidence of the complications uh, compared with the PEA. So in 2001, Feinstein also reported a series of case report treated with BPA. So 18 patients uh, per, uh, were performed BPA. So mean pulmonary depression decreased from 43 to 33 millimeter mercury. Uh, however, 16% of the patients developed to be perfusion pulmonary injury. Three patients required mechanical situations. So the series, uh, 11 years after the original report from Feinstein, so some centers, including us, have continued to define this treatment option and report it to favorable outcomes. So we reported the uh, uh, outcome of the BPA uh, in 68 patients with a CTEF, so mean pop decrease from 45 to 24 millimeter mercury. So the decrease of the mean pop seemed to be superior to the original report from Feinstein. Uh, however, the incidence of lung injury was observed in 60% of the patients. The safety of the BPA has not been established at the time. So lung injury and vascular injury is a serious complication during the BPA. Uh, the upper photograph represents a CT image corresponding with the perfusion area in each uh, visceral injury. So lung uh, injury on CT seems to have a strong relationships uh, with the vascular injury on pulmonary angiogram. So the main cause of lung injury during the BPA considered to be vascular injury due to the procedural complications, like a wire injury, or uh, balloon injury or strong injection of the contrast mediums. So therefore, so we labeled uh, pulmonary angiogram and uh, mm, uh, sorry, uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, so we labeled the pulmonary angiogram and the computed tomography scans uh, after BPA in 76 patients with a CTA. So, and uh, this report reveals that the BPA related vascular injury was an independent predictor of the lung injury after BPA in the logistic regression analysis. Uh, in addition, so high mean pulmonary pressure before BPA and the BPA related vascular injury were independent predictors of the medic, uh, mechanical ventilation of the BPA. So uh, from the initial case uh, treated with BPA in 2004, 
we have modified and defined the way of BP like this. So in the initial strategy, so we limited uh, the number of target region in one or two vessels. Furthermore, so we try to select the balloon size as large as possible. So the reason uh, that we have selected this strategy was very simple. Uh, the number of lesions we could engage the guiding procedures or we could treat is very limited. Uh, therefore, so if we want to decrease mean permanent pressure, so we have had to use a bigger size of balloon. So this strategy, in the initial strategy, so had the big problems. The complication rate was very relatively high. So therefore, so we changed to the second BPA strategy. So in the second BPA strategy, we selected the smaller size of balloon based on the lesion types and the patient hemodynamics. And after that, so we changed to the current BPA strategy. So to obtain the further improvement so of the in mean uh, hemodynamics and the occurrence of complications. Uh, from now on, so I would like to add uh, a, de a detailed explanation of our current BPS strategy. Uh, this slide shows a key concept in the current BPS strategy, uh, starting uh, with S. Uh, number one is a staged region dilatation, so and the simple technique and the systematic procedures. So staged region dilation means uh, dilate the region sequentially in two BPA procedures. So uh, the upper movie shows the initial BPA procedures and the lower movie shows the second BPA procedures. So uh, second BPA procedures were usually performed one month after the initial BPA procedures. So in the initial BPA procedures, so a smaller balloon relative to the actual visual diameter is selected to reduce the recurrence uh, risk of the permanently vascular injury and restore minimum blood flow to the occluded uh, or stenotic pulmonary vessels. So, and the one month later, the treated vessels were enlarged spontaneously and including the distal lesion. And in the following BPA procedures, a larger size of the balloon is selected to optimize the dilation uh, of the regions if necessary. And the second technique is a simple technique. So thanks to the staged balloon duration, the BPA procedure has become very simple. So we don't have to use the interventional modalities like IVERS or OCT to select the balloon size. Uh, check the pulmonary angiogram. So you can see the stenotic lesion here. So, and uh, uh, passing the guide wires through the region and the direct the region with a smaller balloon and check the final angiogram. So that's all. The BP, uh, the technique of the BPA is very simple. So uh, using the only smaller balloon uh, could reduce the therapeutic efficacy in each BPA procedures. Therefore, systematic balloon dilation means uh, treating all the segmental pulmonary artery in each BPA procedures. So I will show you an actual uh, clinical case in the current BPA strategies. So this patient's mean pulmonary pressure was 62 millimeter mercury and the oxygen saturation was 84% and the PVR was 10 wood unit. Uh, the uh, hemodynamics was very severe. So in the first BPA procedures, we treated the right side using the two millimeter balloon, very small size balloon. So uh, these arrows are uh, lesions we directed in the first BPA procedures. And uh, in the second BPA procedures, uh, we treated the left side uh, in the same way as the right side using the very small size balloon. In the third session of the BPA, we treated the same lesion using a bigger size of balloon. And as you can see, we treated more distal lesions because mean palmate pressure decreased to 42 millimeter mercury. In the fourth BPA session, so we treated the left side in the same way as the right side. So after four sessions of the BPA, mean palmate pressure decreased to 23, around 20 millimeter mercury. 
So it's very reasonable to treat the complex region. For the region, we have to treat, we have to use the bigger size bundle. After decrease the mean power of question, to normalize the mean power of of the concept between PEA and the BPA. Assume that. A uh, vertical line represents, represents a permanently flat you, and the horizontal line represents uh, each permanently uh, branches in both ranks, like a Y or like a six and left a four, five, six, and nine can. So uh, with uh, PEA, the reduced blood flow uh, is completely improved uh, with only one PEA procedures. In BPA, uh, the reduced blood flow improved after uh, the usage of a very small laboratory. The improvement blood flow very limited. And uh, uh, in the next session, we treated the left side. And uh, the treated visceral flow improved spontaneously. And in the third session and the fourth session, we treated the light, same region in, the, in both ranks with a bigger size of the and the blood flow would improve. Therefore, the concept of BPA is uh, mm, treating lesions in several times, and the blood flow would improve in uh, several of the BPA procedures. So, and uh, uh, for the total revascularization, total revascularization means uh, treating, treating the all the lesions in both ranks. So selective pulmonary angiography is a uh, gold standard for the selection of the regions. This slide shows the representative uh, perfusion scintigram and uh, global pulmonary angiograms before BPA in patients with a CTF. Perfusion scintigram shows the same perfusion defect, especially in the right lungs. So, and uh, mm, some lesions were detected. Uh, on the global pulmonary angiograms. So, however, none of the segmental pulmonary arteries can be precisely evaluated using a global pulmonary angiogram. And uh, this slide shows the selective pulmonary angiogram in the same patient uh, with uh, the previous slide. So, as shown in this slide, so lesions are generally present uh, in all the segmental and segmental, segmental pulmonary arteries. Systematically checking all segmental and subsegmental pulmonary arteries and treating all regions for sufficient hemodynamic improvements may be ideal. Uh, this concept of total revascularization uh, is similar to the concept of PEA resecting organized one by other form. The technique for inserting the guiding catheter into all the segmental pulmonary arteries in both ranks is essential to aim at the total revascularization. This fly shows a 10 year survival rate uh, after BPA in our hospital. The 10 year survival rate after BPA uh, is around 90, 90%. This result seems to be acceptable compared with PEA. And uh, this slide shows the uh, achievement late over decrease in mean palmate pressure after six months after the final BPA procedures in our hospitals. So residual pulmonary hypertension with mean palmate pressure more than 30 millimeter mercury was only 5% in the hospitals. And uh, this slide shows the improvement of the practice oxygen saturations at flow up. So um, in our hospital, about 70% of the patients were uh, succeed in to increase uh, uh, performance oxygen saturation more than 95%. So therefore, so uh, about 70% of the patients were able to discontinue the home oxygen cell. So this is the last slide, similarly. So pulmonary and endotrectomy remain the treatment of choice in patients with a CT. And a selective pulmonary angiogram is a gold standard for lesion selection in BPA. Uh, sequential dilation uh, in two BPA procedures is reasonable to perform BPA effectively and safely. Uh, candidates of BPA would expand with the improved safety and the efficacy of a BPA. Thank you for your attention. So, 
Thank you, Dr. Shimukawahara. Uh, are there some uh, comments, uh, questions? Ivo? If you allow me, uh, in the, you are the pioneer and you know how to improve the, the methods of treatment. You showed that you had several periods of, uh, of, your, of uh, your method of treatment and uh, more than obvious, it's uh, not easy to do intervention and uh, I would like uh, several very practical uh, practical uh, questions. Uh, for example, what kind of wires and balloons do you use? Are you using coronary style of uh, uh, materials? Uh, thank you for your question. So uh, the B cells, uh, the pulmonary B cell is very fragile. So if we use a very a little harder wires, uh, it easily uh, injures the pulmonary cells. So therefore, so we usually use a very soft wire. The chip load, uh, the first wire we use, uh, the chip load was is a uh, 0.6 grams. So like uh, in coronary artery, uh, so like uh, so, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I forgot the name. So very, uh, the usage of a soft wire is very important. And what kind of, uh, what kind of uh, technology you use in uh, uh, CTO, in totally occluded uh, pulmonary vessels? Yeah, so uh, in my experience, so uh, to treat the total occlusion is very important. So uh, if we treat the total occlusion lesions, part of the first wire is very hard. So uh, like uh, 40, the chip load is a 40 gram, and uh, we usually use the micro catheters. Uh, uh, so uh, almost the same technique uh, with the mm, coronary artery. And what about uh, the supraselective injection, the supraselective angio? Uh, do you use a six French uh, guiding catheter? Uh, in most cases, so six, uh, the usage of a six French guiding catheter is enough. But uh, in some uh, cases, so uh, the we have to uh, we have to use a big, big, uh, big uh, strong back couples. So in case of uh, using the strong back couples, so uh, we usually select the seven flange guiding catheters. And the most and the next uh, the most important thing is that uh, the important thing is a selection of the guiding catheters. Uh, in BPA, there are no specialized uh, catheter for BPA all over the world. Therefore, so uh, we usually arrange or we uh, usually select the guiding catheter for each uh, se se uh, segmental pulmonary artery. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, in treating the left side, we usually select the arm plus left. Uh, uh, light side treating the right side, we usually select the uh, um, uh, marriage purpose guidance. So, actually, your working horse catheters are multi purpose and uh, amplots. Yeah, light side is a marriage purpose and left side is a uh, amplot. Okay, and uh, when you said uh, that uh, you use uh, undersized balloon, what means undersized and what means uh, small balloon and large balloon for BPA? It should be one, two millimeter less than reference, proximal reference diameter or distal. How you select the exact size of the balloon for the first and uh, for the second uh, procedure? Because maybe this is the crucial point uh, to achieve a good result uh, in this procedure. Okay, now that's a very important question. So, of course, uh, the balloon size is different uh, between the uh, proximal regions and the distal region. So, in the initial VPS the procedures, we usually use uh, distal region the two millimeter. So, proximal region is a three millimeter balloon. So, and uh, of course, in the following session, after decreasing the mean pulmonary pressure, uh, almost normal range, we usually use uh, uh, bigger size balloon. So, uh, uh, it uh, depends on the uh, angiographically visual image. So, we usually select the 100% of the visual size. But in the uh, first session of the BPA, we usually select the 50% of uh, uh, from 40, 
percent to fifty percent, very small size program. I see. Okay. So, in fact, I wanted to ask you regarding the criteria, uh, the criteria and the indication to do the procedure. Uh, what uh, are, for example, the uh, clinical criteria, and how do you choose the patient with uh, uh, CTEP? with the chronic hypertension that uh, resistant to treatment, how do you decide who is going to surgery? Mm -hmm. You mentioned uh, okay. this is the golden standard, and who is going to the balloon uh, PTA of, uh, of CTEP? Okay, I see. So uh, we uh, compare the therapeutic efficacy of BPA between the proximal region and the distal region. So in BPA, the therapeutic efficacy is limited at the proximal side. Therefore, so uh, the proximal lesion should be treated with a PEA. This is the basic concept. Mm -hmm. So but, uh, if the patients, uh, even if the proximal lesion, the patients uh, consider to be the inoperable, like uh, advanced stage or uh, the comorbidities, so all the patients who are who, uh, deemed inoperable is uh, all the uh, indications of the PEA. So the contraindications of the BPA would be the mm, so the uh, allergy for the uh, contrast. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Did you have uh, some restenosis after BPA? What is the frequency of this? Uh, I'm sorry, so I can't follow. The restenosis, restenosis after know. balloon uh, angioplasty, because it, in coronaries, in peripherals, it is a frequent especially for the lower limb uh, treatment, this is a very frequent event. So what is the, the frequency of the restenosis after BPA? Oh, uh, thank you very much. So this is the important question. So the bissau, uh, the pulmonary artery is uh, uh, it's different from the coronary artery. So the pulmonary artery is uh, easily enlarged spontaneously. So therefore, so the listenosis of the uh, BPA is very, very rare. But uh, if we, if you, uh, if the, if we treat, if we select the smaller, very smallest balloon size, so it usually uh, listenosis. Therefore, the uh, duration of the following BPA procedure is very important. So in the, um, as I mentioned before, so the selection of the balloon size, the too small balloon size easily increase the risk of listenosis. Therefore, second duration is very important. In the second uh, durations, we have to choose a bigger size of balloon. Uh, if we direct the maximally, so the listenosis rate is very small. Okay. Mm -hmm. So thank you. That was thank a you. great presentation. Thank you for your participation. Yeah. Thank you once again. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, maybe we. Can